Hello, uh, I got a question uh, the other day about Substance Painter and uh, an error that gets output to the log. Uh, it's down here at the bottom. Baking failed, colour map from mesh, could not find vertex colours in mesh. In this case I'm using a gun mesh but it was um, someone's Mars base. Uh, now, this shouldn't matter. I'm a bit puzzled because I was told that this happened when the textures were exported. But I want to show you why this happens. Uh, I'm just testing out my new microphone as well, so hopefully the quality is okay. Uh, so let's make, let's do a new substance. Let's choose a mesh, uh, and let's choose gun textured. Go okay. There's our gun. Now, normally, obviously, in Substance Painter, the first thing you would do when you import a new model is to bake your textures. So you go over here. Uh, I've downloaded a slightly more recent version of Substance. At home, you should be able to get this too. Uh, it's a little bit different to the one in the labs, but for the what we're going to do, it's actually no difference. Just the layout is a little bit different here. So let's go to bake textures. We don't want normal because we don't have a high resolution mesh to bake the normals. Uh, but let's say we were doing, we wanted an ID map. We'd go to ID map, and normally we would load in here uh, gun ID. And I just want to show you what gun ID looks like in Maya. Let's hide the textured version and unhide the ID version. So there is the ID version of it. The way I made this was very simple. Uh, this original model, this gun model originally was lots of different parts. I duplicated it, so I had two versions of the gun. And then I made uh, in the Hypershade just a whole bunch of normal bog standard Lambert shaders just with colours and then I assigned each colour to a different part of the gun or the main parts of the gun uh, that the geometry is made out of and then I combined the whole thing into one mesh so it started out as lots and lots of different meshes to make this gun out uh, make this gun up and then I just combined it all selected it all and then went uh, shift right click combine I don't need to do that and it remembers that you applied different shaders to each part of the gun mesh and maintains that so at the moment it's just one mesh with uh, different Lambert shaders uh, assigned to different parts of it and then I saved that out and called it gun ID and it's absolutely identical geometry wise and UV wise because remember the UVs have to be the same as this one So back in substance. So here we go. I loaded in my ID. Now, if I just hit now bake textures, bake gun textures, it'll do it. And um, actually, you won't notice any difference because the same error message will come up here. Baking finished. But there's that message. You shouldn't worry too much. I mean, you won't have any ID maps. Your ID maps not going to be there. But you can still work on stuff. But the reason that's happening is that when you bake the textures and you put your ID map version of the mesh in here, you have to make sure that down here, by default, it's going to have vertex color because it's looking for vertex colors in that ID map. And that is not how we assigned the colors to our ID version of the mesh. We didn't put it on vertices we put it on uh, materials. We had different Lambert materials. So if you come down here, drop this drop down box and go material color instead. And if you just hover over here, it also sort of um, gives you a rough little, I was about to point at the screen there. It gives you uh, little bits of advice about what needs to be done. So change that to material color. That means now when it bakes the ID map and I can click off world ambient curvature position and thickness, because I just want to rebake ID, it's going to look at the ID version of the gun and look for the materials in that mesh, not the vertex color. And because it finds the materials, it should work this time. Let's try it. There we go. Um, it hasn't cleared that uh, log. Um, I'd never bother really messing around. You'll probably clear it, but I don't bother with it. But look, what's important is now we have a color map from mesh gun. And we can do the usual thing of, let's just chuck any old smart material on. I think there is actually a default gun. Is there a gun metal? Uh, let me see. Steel gun, yeah. 
Let's just chuck that on. So everything gets the gun texture. But if we go add mask with color selection and pick color, let's just pick the main part of the gun. There we go. So our ID mask using the uh, ID version of the gun works nice. So then you should be able to just uh, export this as normal. Export textures. I think, did I create my own? Yeah, I did, didn't I? So I made my I made my own uh, Arnold 5 exporter that was exactly the same as the normal Arnold 5. All I did was deleted uh, emission and height because we're not going to be using that yet. Uh, it's a bit, I guess it's getting close to the hand in date for this, but if you want to ask about uh, emission, then send me an email or, or something like that, and we'll just talk about emission. Emission's quite cool, you know, you can do sort of glowing lights and things like that. So I use my own, I made my own Arnold 5, no height or emission, and uh, to actually go to the configuration settings here, it's probably going to be down the bottom. Oh no, it's going to be alphabetic, alphabetical, sorry. There we go. Look down here, it's going to export that stuff. Uh, let's export it somewhere moderately sensible. Maya, uh, projects, substance lecture, uh, source images. PNGs, yeah, yeah, that's all right, that's okay. Um, obviously you can change the resolution. You can work in a low resolution and then go to a much higher resolution, although I wouldn't go to 8K textures. Uh, that's one of the really really cool things about substances you can work in a super low resolution to make things fast but then when you come to export you can up res uh, so let's go to export export uh, successful again if something comes up here you might if you're not using your own uh, con uh, sort of personalized custom export like I did, where I took out height and emission, you might get an error saying, could not export emission or something like that, or found no emission. Don't worry about it. Just go to open folder, see that your your textures are there, double click them. I don't know whether what Windows is gonna to use to open these by default. Let's use, I don't know, yeah, photos. There you go, and it should work. If you're getting this error, I mean, this error is identical to the one that um, someone asked me, then, and it's not exporting, then I'm a bit more puzzled. Uh, but follow, if you follow that sort of workflow, importantly for the ID map, and the most important thing, remember, being this bit here. So load in your ID version of the mesh there, but make sure you change this to material color and in Maya make sure that your ID version of the mesh is simply just simply has these kind of super basic Lambert colors onto it remember that you can apply these Lambert colors to polygons as well individual polygons so let's go to face I mean so if I selected those and then applied a different one let's apply you see so you don't have to be super, I mean, it's, you're going to have an easier time if you apply these ID kind of shaders to objects when they're separate and then combine. But if you forget to do that, know that you can still apply shaders to individual polygons. And also UV shells actually should work. There you go. Yeah, UV shells is a bit bit easier if you want to select big chunks of uh, of stuff because sometimes selecting polygons individually is going to be a bit of a chore so sometimes UV shells will be easier to do uh, yeah well I hope that works and um, I'll see you well I'll see some of you on um, next week thanks bye bye